What's up, my printed people? This is episode number one in a three-part series going over the E3D Volcano Hotten. In this video, I'm going to be explaining to you why I love big nozzles, and I cannot lie. All right, let's get into it. Yeah. I'm going to ease into this so that anyone can understand the importance of the hot end. Let's start somewhere that everyone has common ground. Paper printers have print heads for the same reason FDM printers have hot ends. To apply ink or plastic in a precise amount to a specific location in space. Now let's jump to a weapon in every hobbyist tool belt, the hot glue gun. Everyone knows how a hot glue gun works. You plug it in, it heats up, you jam a stick of glue in it and pull the trigger which grabs and advances the glue stick further into the hot end. You see where I'm going with this? Just like a hot glue gun, the hot end component of a 3D printer heats up and extrudes the material, but it takes precision to the next level. It is critical that a hot end be able to do a couple things very precisely. Feed filament consistently, has accurate temperature control with sufficient thermal capacity, and smoothly extrudes a specific size bead of plastic. So I have to admit, before I'd ever tried the E3D V6 or the hot end, I thought to myself, these guys want $80 to $100 for a hot end? That's ridiculous. That's only for suckers. I'm gonna build one for half the price. It's gonna work way better. I'm gonna kick E3D's butt. I'm gonna just prove how smart I am. And that's when I started working on the hyper hot end. You may have seen some pictures on Facebook and Twitter that I posted as I was working on it. But not knowing much about the actual science behind a hot end, I experimented to figure things out. I started by running a steady state thermal analysis and tried to remove as much weight as possible while still having a proper thermal profile. Then I started to make my prototype hyper hot end out of stainless steel on a manual engine lathe and mill. After cranking out some prototypes that worked reasonably well, I started to contact local machine shops to see what the cost of a production run would be. They came back with quotes from anywhere between $800 and $1,200 for a single hot end. This is where things begin to fall apart. Stainless steel has great thermal attributes over aluminum, but the cost and manufacturability of stainless is atrocious. So I already lost the battle of keeping costs down big time. I started all over again, but this time working with some very smart manufacturing engineers to come up with an ultimate high performance but low cost hot end. And despite my best efforts, it turned out to be almost exactly the same as what E3D people had done. An aluminum heat sink with a stainless steel heat break going into an aluminum heater block. The experience I gained working on my hyper hot end gave me a proper respect and understanding as to what makes a good hot end. Now, when I go on to talk about E3D, you know I'm not just jumping on a bandwagon. I tried my best to throw mud in their face, but I came out of this with a deep respect for what they have come up with. Alright, now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of why you're watching this video. Who is E3D? Well, there are a few blokes from Britain with a fantastic understanding of engineering and manufacturing. The best part of all is that they have a healthy respect for the open source community, and all of their engineering prints and designs can be downloaded from their website. They primarily are known for their work with hot ends, and their flagship product is called the V6 Hot End. A wide variety of hot ends complement the V6, and the one in particular that you are here to see is the Volcano. I first ordered the V6 as a full kit and installed it into the Ultimaker using one of the mini print head designs I found on Thingiverse. I was happy and it worked as I expected, but my satisfaction did not last long and I wanted to try what the clever chaps at E3D had simply coined, the Volcano. I ordered the Eruption Pack, which comes with the parts needed to convert a V6 to a Volcano hot end. The conversion over from a V6 to a Volcano can be seen in video number 2. Watching it is essential to your 3D printing livelihood. Alright, you've waited long enough. Now I'm going to get into what the Volcano does well. It does several things quite well actually. It prints very big, it prints fast, and it prints incredibly strong. This hot end is for people who want to make prints that are as strong as possible. Things like mounts, brackets, and cases are ideal for this type of hot end. It's not really for people who want intricate little figurines with tiny critical little details. The bigger diameter nozzles that come with the Volcano produce much bigger beads. 1.2, 1.0, 0.8, and 0.6 nozzles come with the eruption pack. Typical nozzles are only around 0.4 millimeters in diameter. A bigger bead means that more volume per layer comes out, so prints are built much faster. I'm talking two to four times faster here. Wider beads also mean much more surface area contact from layer to layer, which drastically improves layer bonding adhesion. Now that's a big deal because most prints fail because of layer adhesion, not because of the mechanical properties of the plastic. Okay, now I want to show you how each nozzle has a range of layer thicknesses it can print with. I have spent a lot of time playing with printer settings just to figure out where the limits of each nozzle is. Now, of course, just as with all 3D printing examples, what I'm showing you is a guide to help you figure out what works best with your specific printer. 
What I consider optimum may not work best for you, but it should get you close so that you don't have to start from scratch. The 0.6mm nozzle can print layers from 0.1 to 0.5mm high while obeying the layer width to height ratio never going below 1.2 rule. I found that the prints with 0.1 layers had inconsistent perimeter surface finish and 0.5 layers had a hard time putting down enough material and gaps were visible. My recommendations are to use the 0.6 nozzle for 0.2 to 0.4 layers. Anything bigger, switch to a bigger nozzle. The layer range that I determined for the 0.8 nozzle is between 0.5 and 0.7 millimeter layers. Now let me be clear, it is not impossible to print outside this range, but I'm not changing printer settings between these prints. I only want one print profile per nozzle. This keeps things simple and reliable. Staying between 0.7 and 0.9 millimeter layers with the one millimeter nozzle is what I found to work best. At this point, you really can see that the smaller features are starting to disappear from the models. If you're curious why some of these prints look terrible, it's because they were printed outside of my recommended range. The biggest 1.2mm nozzle prints with a crazy 0.9 to 1.1mm layer. It's amazing to think that while printing a single layer at 1.1mm thick, that's the same as 11 layers at 0.1. I had to turn the temperature of the hot end up to 240C and the print speed down to 25mm a second to keep the plastic flowing properly. The volcano is putting down such a large volume of plastic you need the extra temperature to keep things moving. If you see under extrusion while printing these big layers, then try increasing temperature and slowing down the print speed before increasing the extrusion multiplier. Your extruder stepper is already working hard to keep up, so don't make it work any harder. As you can see, the volcano can produce a wide variety of layer heights. Even at the lower layer heights, like 0.2, the volcano proved to be a great option for normal prints where you would use a 0.4mm nozzle. I personally have been using the volcano for all of my prints since I installed it, but I almost exclusively use the 0.6 and 1.2 nozzles. If I want thinner layers or small detailed features, I use the 0.6, and if I'm looking for strength, I use the 1.2 for the biggest layers possible. Now, as you increase nozzle diameter, you start to lose the ability to print small diameters, and I can see using the 0.8 or 1.0 nozzle if you want to keep the layers as big as possible while still being able to print certain features. I have shown the speed and versatility of the Volcano, but I have yet to prove that it really does print stronger. So here we go. I made a standardized test that anyone can duplicate. This model targets layer adhesion when you pull on either end. It's kind of like a tensile specimen. Measuring the force that it takes to split the layers, I can compare the bonding strength of different size layers. This will also work well to test different materials. Doing three tests per nozzle gave me a nice average force to compare with. Okay, so taking the average of the first three tests gave 57.2 pounds. That's pretty impressive considering this is a small hollow part with only two perimeters. Ooh, this chart's getting filled out quite nicely. See, I told you so. With smaller layers comes less strength. Well, at least that's always what Uncle Ben said. Or was that something about responsibility? I don't know. Hmm, I'm noticing a trend here. Do my print up people see it? I think y'all get it. Layers that are taller are also wider. Wide layers mean more surface area to bond to other layers. So we can all agree that there's a relation between big layers and print strength. Well, this turned into a bloody primer on 3D printing, didn't it? A lot more than you bargained for when you clicked on this video, I know. But hopefully it taught you something you didn't already know or explained something you didn't fully understand. Either way, everyone goes home a winner here. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something from this video. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, please hit the like button, or if you thought it was a waste of time, please hit the dislike button that lets me know what my printed peoples are interested in. Make sure and subscribe to my channel and check out my Facebook and Twitter for more frequent posts, and I'll see you next time. I have so many owls and binties, I don't know what to do. If you've got any good ideas on how I can use them, let me know in the comments down below.